Uh, Augustus Invictus, U.S. Senate candidate from Florida. A rich man drives his luxury car up to the poor farmer, and he says, I'm here from the bank. The bank is taking your land back because you failed to make payments. The farmer says, I've got nothing left but this land, and it's hard enough to grow anything on it just for me and my family. So get the hell out of here, or I'll shoot you. And the rich man says, it's not him who's taking his land, it's the bank. And he was sent here by some guy sitting at the desk in the city. Then I'll shoot him, said the farmer. Well, you can't shoot him, said the rich man. He's just a guy doing his job, just like me. So the farmer, frustrated, throws up his hands and says, then who do we shoot? And we have the same problem, brothers and sisters. We are farmers tilling barren ground so that we have just enough, if we're lucky. And the federal government is the rich man in the luxury car driving up to our farm and telling us, we are taking back your right to free speech. We are taking back your right to freedom of association. We are taking back your right to the freedom to bear arms. We're taking back your right against warrantless searches. And we're taking back your right to due process of law. And God forbid that you fail to make your payments to the IRS because we will take everything from you. Yes, we have the same problem as that poor farmer, brothers and sisters. The rich man says, it's not us, the federal agents, who are taking these rights from you. It's the folks in Washington. It's the president and vice president, the senators and the representatives, the Supreme Court justices. They sent us here to take these things from you. And if we, like the poor farmer, said, all right, well, we'll go and shoot them, then the federal agents would say, well, you can't shoot them. They're just guys doing their jobs, just like us. Then who do we shoot? Our enemies are those who are directing the policies of the federal government. And our enemies are faceless. And that's exactly how they want it. They know exactly who we are. They have us on the watch lists. They have our home addresses, our photographs, information on our families, on our jobs, on our shopping habits. But no one knows who they are. So I will name our enemies. The mainstream media, CNN, MSNBC, Fox News, and all the rest. Those who sell lies about us to a gullible public. The financial machine, the Federal Reserve, the banks, the IRS, those who would destroy our nation's wealth so that they can get richer. The propagandists, the communists, the Marxists, and the think tanks, the professors, those who would poison the minds of our fellow Americans so that they will believe in nothing anymore. The federal government itself, the White House, Congress, the Supreme Court, those who are turning America into an internationalist communist country by force. Make no mistake, the federal government has turned hostile toward us, the American people. Why, less than two months ago, the Department of Justice stated that nationalists, white racialists, anarchists, and those with anti-government views were a bigger threat to America than ISIS. This means that every single one of us in this room is considered a bigger threat to our own country than the people they are bombing over in Iraq and Syria. So think about that. If the federal government has no qualms whatsoever with bombing schools and hospitals over there where ISIS is, then why would you think that they will show your children and your women quarter when they come after us? And that is why I say, and I say it again, prepare for war.
Make no mistake, the federal government has turned hostile toward us, the American people. 100 years ago, Woodrow Wilson sold this country to the internationalist bankers. And every day for a century, the government has been doing their bidding. And every day for a century, they have marched further and further toward communism. Why today, the word nationalism is a profanity, even amongst our fellow libertarians. This disease has spread so far and wide that it is now deep within our very culture. But while the federal government may be beyond saving, our nation is not. And that is why I say, and I say it again, fight for your country, not for your government. Make no mistake, the federal government has turned hostile toward the American people, toward us. War is coming. And when it does, the mainstream media must be the first targets. For if they call you traitors and terrorists now, and the American people believe it, what will they do in order to poison the minds of the very people you are fighting for? And I know that it's scary to think about, because I have to worry every single night whether this is the night that the FBI breaks down my front door and hauls me off as a political prisoner, like Marcus Fayella, or whether they're going to surround my house and burn it down with me inside, like they did Robert J. Matthews, who died at 31 years of age, 31 years ago tonight. I know that it's scary to think about, but hiding your heads in the sand and pretending to be good slaves isn't going to change a goddamn thing. What makes us think that we are immune to history? And what makes us so gullible to believe that all the civil wars and the government massacres and the oppressive regimes are somehow something of the past, something that we and our children will never have to see? You already live under an oppressive regime. You're just too distracted by your televisions to realize it. Our people already are being massacred by the federal government. But it is more comfortable to swallow the official story that the media gives us. Civil war is already here. We just haven't woken up to the fact that the military helicopters, the armored personnel carriers, the cops dressed in tactical gear with assault rifles are not on our streets to protect us from the Chinese and the Russians or from ISIS and Al Qaeda. They are here to protect the government from us. Now let me open your eyes to just one more thing. It is our fault that our country is the way it is today. It is your fault and it is my fault. We allowed this to happen when we turned a blind eye and looked the other way when the government began its war on terror. We allowed this to happen when we said we were too smart to vote because the choice is always bullshit and all the candidates are the same. We allowed this to happen when we were too proud to get involved in politics because politics is dirty and it's violent and we don't want anything to do with those scumbags. We allowed this to happen when we said the Democrats did it or the Republicans screwed this up because we were pushing the responsibility off of ourselves and onto someone we could not hold accountable. Yes, the Democrats have taken away our freedoms and yes, so have the Republicans. And yes, the media has brainwashed the American people. And yes, the bankers and the government officials, they're all blood-sucking parasites. But we would not have lost our freedoms if we had risen up to fight for them. We would not be brainwashed if we would simply stop swallowing it. 
And we would not be on the verge of national collapse if we had not allowed the banks and the governments to eat us out of house and home. So when that rich man drives his luxury car up to your farm and tells you, I'm here to take your land, you need to recruit him and show him the error of his ways and tell him to fight for the American people and against the federal government. And if he still decides to keep his job and do the bidding of the bank, then you know who to shoot. My name is Augustus Invictus, and I'm a candidate for United States Senate. I want to thank you all for your support, and I look very much forward to fighting with you by your side in the coming year. Thank you.